The proliferation of wireless networks and wireless network speed has made it such that you don't need hard line connections to these devices anymore. So it's really taken IoT from being a niche solution for a small number of players to being something that because of the innovation in power and, and network is available to everyone. Hi, I'm Brian Jackson, editor at IT World Canada. I'm here today at Technicity, our event that we co-host with the City of Toronto. With me is one of the keynote speakers, Gary Simplonius, the Vice President of Business Mobility for Bell Canada. Welcome. Thanks, Brian. It's good to be here. Let's recap some of what you were talking about in this morning's speech. First of all, there were four pillars of uh, IoT, Internet of Things, that you uh, talked about. Right. Tell us about those four pillars. At its most base level, IoT is quite simple. There's four elements that you need for IoT to exist. The first is you need some sort of electronic device, something that you can power on. The second thing is, on that piece of electronic equipment, there has to be software that allows you to manage and monitor those devices. And third, and really most important business benefit of IoT, is there has to be a sensor. You have to be measuring something. Wind speed, location, time, movement, volume. Whatever it is you need to measure for your business. And finally, and most importantly for Bell Mobility, is network connectivity. With those four elements, you have an IoT solution. Citizens of cities, service expectations are rising. Okay, so the, the things that they expect, the expectations, the service levels that they have from the city that they live in, just like for the company that they pay the bill to, their service expectations are rising. You raised a couple of uh, sort of exciting ideas that we could use IoT solutions to solve some problems that we face in uh, cities today. Right. So in the GTA in Toronto, our average commute time is 82 minutes, which is actually worse than the city of Los Angeles. Commuters in Toronto waste 111 hours in traffic. That's not, they spend 111 hours in their car. That means if they take the time it should normally take without traffic and add to that how much additional time, it's 111 hours annually they spend in their car. So that's obviously huge impact on productivity, not just for citizens, but for employees. So first of all, you said that maybe I could spend less time commuting uh, thanks to some IoT. Tell me about that solution. Right. Well, there's a number of solutions, Brian, that deal with traffic issues municipalities are facing today. Rapid population growth is causing overusage of our highways and city streets. And smart solutions like meters within our stoplights ensure that we're eliminating unnecessary gridlock and keeping our, our commuters moving as quickly as we can. Another great solution is smart parking. So 30% of the traffic within cities is people roaming around looking for a parking spot. With a smart parking solution, municipalities can direct those drivers directly to the parking and enable pay right on the spot. Obviously, if traffic is an issue, a solution is improving public transit. The more people we have on public transit, the less strain there is on our, on our roads. So there's a number of ways that municipalities are going about improving public transportation. Okay, and I think the number one objective of all of these is to make their experience better. Another solution you talked about, and this was interesting to me, that we could actually save uh, water from leaking through our aging infrastructure. Right. Yeah, using acoustic sensors, we can detect water leakage before it gets to your tap. But in the city of Toronto, there's 5,000 kilometers of water main. Okay, and the average age of that 5,000 kilometers of water main is 54 years old. On average, 25 to 30 percent of the water is lost en route to your tap. Okay, and the cost of the lost water is about $700 million annually. Okay, the cost of refining, distributing, and maintaining the ecosystem. If we could find ways to reduce lost water, there's $700 million there for the city. By using these acoustic sensors to determine the leaks, we can get there before it happens and save that inefficiency. Macro sites for us, the big towers, uh, are becoming more of a thing of the past, and we're looking for microsite solutions within cities, on building. We're working with municipalities on what we're calling the Smart City Kiosk, which is actually a three meter pedestal device with the screen in front of it that has a microsite inside of it. Okay, so it serves as a wireless site for us. Part of our problem as we grow our wireless network and demand increases for wireless services is where do we put our towers? There's infrastructure associated with wireless and quite honestly there's real estate challenges, cost challenges and stigma associated with some of those large infrastructure projects. So we've implemented microsites inside of a kiosk that looks like a, a smart billboard 
that enables us to put microsites inside of those kiosks, work with advertising to create digital signing, digital signage on those devices, and work with municipalities to do uh, messaging, community service alerts, as well as public safety announcements uh, on those devices. So it's so much so, uh, the, the value is so much so that the City of New York has announced their plans to remove all of their pay phones and replace them with a smart city kiosk. We ourselves predict that by the end of 2016, our number of IoT network connections will exceed our number of traditional wireless network connections meaning the business that has taken us 30 years to build will be eclipsed by the IoT business in probably 24 months. Well, that's great. Well, thanks so much, Gary, and great job with the keynote today. Again, I'm Brian Jackson. We're here at Technicity. Look for links below this video, and you can watch other videos from Technicity today.